G.P. Rowling said, whether you come back by page or by the big screen, Hogwarts would always be welcoming you home with the same warmth with which invites her to extend a warm welcome to everyone gathered here for the day two session of the symposium titled Beyond the Page AI Ethics in the Literary Realm. We are delighted to have you all again here at the campus. Before we proceed to today's plenary session, we have Mrs. Angela, Assistant Professor, Department of English, to give us a review of the day one. A very good morning to one and all present. Education is not to reform students or amuse them or to make them expert technicians. It is to unsettle their minds, widen their horizons, inflame their intellects, teach them to think straight if possible. Robert M. Hutchins. On that note, I'll start the review of yesterday. The day commenced with the much anticipated re release of the Literary Digest titled A Genesis of Literary Insights. The event was graced by the presence of distinguished speakers, each shedding light on the intersection of literature, technology, and artificial intelligence. We were thrilled to have started off the day with Dr. Armstrong the head and senior professor of the Center for Endangered Languages, University of Madras, delivering an enlightening discourse on the role of AI in various literary domains. He eloquently discussed the significance of AI in text mining, digitalizing oral literature, recording family archives, and facilitating translations and transcriptions. He emphasized the importance of mastering technology rather than becoming enslaved by it. Dr. Armstrong shared interesting insights on Sean Tan's groundbreaking graphic novel, The Arrival, which employs photorealism sans words. Following Dr. Armstrong's compelling presentation, Dr. Kalvi Karasi, Principal and Associate Professor of English, Hindu College, delved into the evolution of AI in literature. From Ada Lovelace, the, probably the first computer programmer, to the contemporary literary di uh, giants. She highlighted the contributions of literary trailblazers on the subject, like Isaac Asimov, Philip Dick, and William Gibson, who paved the way for AI exploration in literature. Dr. Kalvi Karasi underscored the nuances of AI-generated literature, citing examples such as the day a computer writes a novel and the road while acknowledging the challenges of content, language construction, and authorship. Next, we have Dr. S. Sri Devi, principal and professor of English, from Chevalier T. Thomas Elizabeth College for Women, enlightening us on the ethics in research, giving very relatable anecdotes. With an extensive knowledge, she elevated the conversation by weaving together insights from various sources. She challenged us to delve deeper in the aspects of research. After that, we had Mr. Ian Govan, who further expanded on the applications of AI-generated literature in research and various industries, from grammar editing tools and research tools like Research Rabbit and Trinka to innovative platforms such as our very familiar ChatGPT and ChatPDF, he showcased the transformative potential of AI in scientific research, plagiarism detection, and self-driving software. While acknowledging the benefits of AI, he too cautioned against its potential risks and underscored the importance of ethical considerations in its deployment. The session concluded with a call to explore the multifaceted role of AI in the humanities, emphasizing its potential in translation, meteorology, entertainment, and beyond. As attendees departed, 
They carried with them a newfound appreciation for the dynamic interplay between literature, technology, and the human experience. The insights shared during the event serve as a catalyst for further exploration and reflection, sparkling a dialogue that promises to shape the future of literature in the age of artificial intelligence. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. I invite our vice principal, Ms. Japia Solomon, to felicitate the resource person, Dr. P. Santosh, Professor of English, Wales University. I request Mr. Kachula, head of the department, to honor the resource person with a plan. May I now invite Ms. Narmada, Assistant Professor of Department of English, to introduce our resource person, Dr. P. Santosh. Good morning, all. It's my honor to introduce you to Dr. P. Santosh, an esteemed scholar and dedicated educator whose contributions to the field of English language teaching are truly remarkable. Dr. Santosh's journey in academics spans over eight years, during which he has held various impactful roles, currently serving as an assistant professor of English at Wales Institute of Science, Technology and Advanced Studies. He has demonstrated unwavering commitment and passion for nurturing the minds of students. With a rich educational background, Dr. Santos' qualification includes doctorate and PhD, BA and DTED. His academic achievements are not only reflected in his credentials, but also in his prolific research output. He has authored numerous publications in prestigious journals, covering a wide array of topics in English language teaching and literature. Dr. Santosh's dedication to scholarly pursuits go behind the confines of his university. He has actively participated in conference, seminars, and workshops, both as a presenter and as a facilitator. His notable publications are The Last Girl, A Journey from Sufferer to Savior, and Making Teaching Compatible with Digital Natives a Survey. His expertise in research methodology and pedagogical inversions has earned him recognition and awards, including the Best Researcher Award in 2016 at VIT and Faculty Excellence Awards at Wales University in 2021 and 23. Our speaker is a multifaceted individual with a passion for personal development and community engagement. His well-rounded personality and commitment to holistic growth can be seen through his passion for bodybuilding and scouting. Dr. P. Santosh embodies the ideals of scholarship, mentorship, and leadership. His profound impact on English language education, coupled with his dedication to academic excellence and personal growth, makes him a true asset to the academic community. Please join me in extending a warm welcome to Dr. Santosh, whose presence enriches our intellectual discourse and inspires us to strive for excellence. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. And Dr. P. Santosh to impart knowledge on language and literature in the age of artificial intelligence. This could be the handmaid. So, good morning to all. So, before I uh, begin my session, I just want to thank the management for giving a, a wonderful opportunity and uh, thank Ms. Namura ma'am for uh, 
a detailed uh, uh, introduction about myself and uh, so shall I start now? Okay. And this is what the title, Language and Literature in the Age of AI. And you have been listening to AI sessions from yesterday. So what's the session is all about today. And first, I just want to give you uh, a need for AI. And you always prefer uh, fast food, right? How many of you like fast food? Okay, you always prefer fast food. Okay, and how many of you like to have uh, uh, food in online delivery? Ordering food from home, from hostel? Okay. We always prefer that. And how many of you like Maggie here? Maggie? Egg Maggie, chicken Maggie? Yes? Okay. And why do you have the fond of food? The reason is it gives uh, instant food. Yes? And that, that is what, no, the favor that we have towards AI. Because it gives anything, everything instantly. What do we want? It used to give AI, and that's what uh, we always uh, have that kind of bonding with AI. Because whatever we have, we always prefer Google just uh, a few years before. But now we always prefer AI. Why we need this AI, and what is the nature of this AI, the artificial intelligence? And if you want to learn about AI, have some qualities to access to it. Because you should have some knowledge, because it's not like uh, uh, working with the Google. Whatever we have a doubt or whatever we want to search, we always go for the search engine and we used to type it, what it is, then we'll get the answer. But for uh, having a bonding with AI, we need some qualifications. And uh, so what can be the basic qualification for accessing AI? So we should have uh, a good listening skill. We should have uh, good speaking, writing, and we should have the vocabulary. Because we need to type, no, and we need to communicate to the AI, right? So if we communicate in the wrong manner, or if we uh, uh, give the uh, wrong inputs, then AI will not give the uh, proper tools or the sources to us. So are we eligible to interact with the AI? So we need to judge it. And we're going to check, are we qualified to use the AI platforms? And uh, can we go to the next slide, ma'am? Okay, so we we see about the root of language, first of all. So the root of language is all about that starts from uh, yeah, the listening. Because uh, probably if you are uh, a ELTN or if you learn a language, that always starts from yeah, LSRW, we coined the abbreviation, right? Why we are keeping the L first of all? So listening is always uh, ultimate. That is how uh, we learned our mother tongue. And we are very comfortable with mother tongue when compared to the alienated language like English. I hope you all agree. Yes, we are very comfortable in speaking Tamil, but not in English. And uh, nobody is fresher here. Nobody is fresher here because we have around 40 years of experience with English. From A4 Apple, B4 Ball to... No, the journey had that we had no... It's almost 14 years, but still, if I ask anybody to speak or to interact, we always know we have a, a panic face, or we used to ignore the topic, because the language doesn't give enough confidence to us. I hope you all agree with this. So the base is always needed that starts from here, because our mother tongue by listening. And the way how the mother introduced the language Tamil to us is based on the sounds. She used to uh, uh, coin the word like Bua for introducing food. Food is like Bua. It doesn't have any meaning in even in Tamil, but she introduced the language with sound. She introduced a dog as Juju. Juju is a kind of a blend. J -U -J -U. She can introduce the dog as uh, Noi or with some other name, but she introduced with the sounds. The major objective of the language is to reproduce the sound, imitating 
So the language that started with a lot of imitations. But our English that doesn't start with imitation, but it started with the alphabets. And you are not aware of any grammatical uh, uh, sources or grammatical knowledge in even in Tamil. And nobody knows, I think, uh, we are not aware of the Ilakana Kuritu Pagavada Urupilakanam. But we know what is article preposition, but still we may not uh, very much comfortable with English. Yes? So started with listening. And why I'm focusing on listening? Because the AI always work with the theme of algorithms. It used to listen to us. What is the feedback or the input that we are giving? The AI used to listen to us. How it used to listen? Through the voice recognition or through the text, what we are feeding. So what kind of uh, code language that has we uh, human has that we will check so that we will easily get to know how this human code works, how AI works. Why AI is being superior to the human codes that we will look on it. And travel to rote learning, because we, uh, we have been practicing this kind of uh, rote learning. And uh, in your language, you used to tell, no, by heart thing. We always used to by heart. If you are not familiar with the concept or the source, we always used to uh, by heart, and that happens in the school days while we are memorizing the poems. And now we should stop it. So what was the concept that we are looking on? And uh, we should understand the concept of the con uh, the sources, then we should understand it. Then comes AI, artificial intelligence, the simulation of human intelligence processes by machines often through the use of algorithms and uh, computational models. And uh, that gives the uh, enables computer and machines to perform various of tasks. So what are the tasks this AI involves with visual perception? speech recognition, decision making, and language translation. And these are the things that we're going in detail now. Can I have the next slide? Okay, so this is the framework that we have been talking about, L, S, R, W. The AI is all combined with all the four skills, L, S, R, W. So what is the role of AI in enhancing our listening, developing our speaking, or uh, fostering our reading and developing our writing. How this AI can be a, a, a important role in developing all the four skills. Next slide, sir. Okay, the importance of language skills. Because the study has revealed by uh, Peter R. Garber uh, in the year uh, 2008, that you're able to see that how a man spends the four skills in his lifespan. So in one's lifespan, a person spends 16% for reading, 9% for writing, 30% for speaking, and 45% for listening. So we have been a healthy listener. We have been an active listener for throughout our life. And uh, so we check the human code uh, with a, a small uh, a checker. Okay? Uh, so that we can understand how this AI code works and how our human code works. I have a secret now in my pocket. So this is, just consider this is a human code. Uh, or uh, just consider it as a secret from my side. And I'm going to show the secret or pass the secret to one of you. And uh, you should share the secret one by one, like coding. So this is how the human code works. So we'll see what is the output from the human code that I'll get. So I'm going to, as a human, I'm going to generate this code to one of you. So I'm going to consider you as a human AI, okay? So that we'll understand. So uh, can I have the first one, the student? Where we... Can anyone come here to collect the code from me? <laughs> okay, just read the secret only once and you're supposed to convey the secret. Uh, okay, where it goes, okay. Just read the secret and convey the secret only once to your friend. And you should just go in there, your. Know. Got it? Fine? Okay. Just convey the secret to one of your friends. Anybody. Anybody. Everybody should pass the secrets. 
So finally, I target the photographer of our client session. <laughs> So we see how the human code works. Only one skill. Your friend will be asking you to repeat it, but don't repeat. <laughs> Only once, yeah. He can tell you to the next one by whispering. So it's a secret, don't shout. It's a secret from mouth to ear, okay? Yes, that's it, only once. Next. Just pass the secret. It's like a gossip boy or no <laughs> having fear to pass it. Okay. You can convey the code to the a person from here. The last one, get up and pass a secret somewhere here, this side, left side. No, wait, 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 wait. He's the one who received the secret, right? Yes, pass the secret in the your left side. I think he's thinking whether it is a secret or a code. Yes. Yeah, just let's go. It's a secret, no? Okay, I am so. Okay. Yeah, then the preview, the next one can go. Yeah. Okay, just two more. Yes. Okay, the last one. Yes, ma'am, please come here. And uh, where is my photographer? Sir, please come here. Okay, so uh, he's my uh, first source and my last source. I mean, so I generated my code to him and I'll be getting the code from the AI, okay? This is a human process. So the code is, I mean, the secret is? No, what is it? I mean, what do you read? I So this is how the code works. I have given him the English code, he translated it and he just conveyed. So, uh, so what is the output, ma'am? For the period, I have a bank account, I have a bank account. Okay, and this is the secret, and he's going to read it. Yeah, read the secret now. A police officer uh, caught the thief who robbed the bank last week. Okay. A police officer caught the thief who robbed the bank last week. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your cooperation. See, a lot of code destruction will happen when we are passing that code, when we're passing it in a human transfer. We used to manipulate. We used to do a lot of editing, and if you're not comfortable, we used to translate the content. Yes, and these are the things happen. So, when you are listening to something, the AI should be very careful. So, whatever the input that you are giving, it just takes what you are giving. It doesn't bother about the sense or the culture or the country that we belong, that we belong to. It takes the feedback. So we should be very careful when we are generating the codes to the AI. Why we are peculiar in this? Because we may not aware of the number of vocabulary. Because we are, I, I hope you all know about the two kinds of vocabulary. We have active and passive vocabularies. AI can generate any kind of vocabularies. But only we know, only we know the meaning of the vocabulary that change based on the sense and the situation. Uh, for example, uh, uh, we are aware of the uh, vocabulary enemy. And the foe is also kind of an uh, enemy, but we are aware of the word enemy, but not foe. 
for example, another uh, we will take a help and rescue. Both are kind of uh, giving uh, someone a need. And uh, but we are not sure about that. We supposed to use the word help and that we supposed to use rescue. Yes, but AI will grab the meaning that based on the sentence or based on the nature that we are applying that particular word. So the first thing we should be a, a good listener first that what we're going to ask or what is the source or what is the code that we're going to apply or that we're going to generate in the AI. Then the next slide. Okay. Yeah, before we uh, get into the AI, we need to understand uh, who all comes under uh, digital immigrants and who are all digital natives. And why? Because uh, the generation that I belong to, the 90s, I am a digital immigrants, and you people are digital natives. People who were born in, I, in uh, your language, you know, 2K kids, 90 kids. Yes, so 2K kids always belong to the digital natives because you born in the age of AI, technology, and uh, exposure that you have towards uh, technical devices, but we do not. So what is the difference between these two generations? How you varies from there? So uh, we used to adopt the web technologies, but whereas the digital natives, they born during or after the digital age. And we always prefer to talk in person. We are, I'm comfortable to talk in person or traditional classroom setups, but you always like, you uh, used to spend a lot of time with your mobile and you are comfortable in online sessions. But uh, as a teacher, no, I feel awkward when I'm handling through uh, online classrooms because a system will be there and it will be like I'm talking to my system which doesn't give any responses and I'll be uh, you know, calling my students whether he is in online or whether he is a switch on his uh, net and he was sleeping. I, I, I don't bother about it and I was not about, aware about it. So you were the digital natives who comes on the, the intuitive learners next. Intuitive learners, you don't bother about the sense of the sources, but you will learn. You don't know why you are learning it and uh, what is the essential thing that you will get by learning it. But you will learn because uh, always you will get a feedback uh, from your fellow friends that uh, he'll be telling, I don't know why I've joined this course. I don't know why I'm studying this subject. We have a number of subjects, but still we don't know why we are studying it, why we have history of English literature, why we have Shakespeare, why I want to read it. We get a question before the, if tomorrow is our exam date, today we get a question, why I want to read about Shakespeare. I'm in Tamil Nadu, I'm in India, why I want to learn about the social history of England when I'm not aware of my history. Yes, that is what the digital natives. And we always prefer library and you always have the digital library in your hand. And uh, we're always focusing on one task at a time, and you'll be focusing on the multiple tasks at a time. That's why I know you used to have the option like a close all tabs, because you'll be running for multiple tabs. One tab will be working on Instagram, other tab, you no, know, you'll be working on Facebook. And uh, what is gaming? You'll be having multiple tasks. So you'll play for some time, you will search for the news feed, you will update your... Uh, uh, no, you will update your status in the WhatsApp. So, multiple tasks. Next slide, sir. Okay, and here comes the vocabulary bank. And this is the last stage that, that gives us the confidence to work with AI. How we can judge that we are capable of or we are having a enough vocabulary bank in ourselves. Each one of us have our mini library or a mini dictionary in our mind. So whenever we want to speak, whenever we want to write, we always take the words from our mini library or the, the mini dictionary that we have in our mind. If we have lack of words or lack of vocabulary, we always struggle. And it happens when we are from a regional medium background and uh, student use, and I'm not having a uh, kind of a wealthy exposure towards English. And that's why we always have the uh, panic phases or alienated feel towards English. So what is the level of vocabulary that we should have to work with AI? Because when you're not comfortable with AI, 
then AI will not respond to you or AI will not give you the proper uh, generated sources to you. So what is the level of vocabulary that we should have? So they have classified that A1, A2, B1, B2, and C1, C2. These are the level of vocabulary. And the first one, A1 and A2, which is considered as basic user, we can consider them as uh, people who are uh, uh, belong to uh, school educations, school students, because they will be having 500 to 1,000 vocabularies in their mind. Along with this, they will be you know, using the language to interact with his teacher and to write their exams. But whereas the uh, independent user, uh, such as B1 and B2, have intermediate and upper, upper uh, intermediate students, they belong to B1 and B2. Whereas they should have the vocabulary bank around 2,000 to 4,000. Whereas the proficiency user, C1 and C2, have 8,000 to 16,000 vocabularies. So when you have the sufficient vocabulary in your mind, you can convey, you can interact, you can write, whatever that comes in your mind. There is an advanced level. Uh, you say, no, it's a pro level. And that is what the pro level. So we should have 16,000 words. OK. We can question you that uh, so AI can translate everything. If I speak in Tamil and I, if I need it in English, it used to give. Or if I'm speaking in English or if I want it in Chinese, the AI will generate. So why I need vocabulary? So what is the answer from your side? Because AI can translate everything. No, then why we need vocabulary? Uh, yes. Then any other answers? Because AI can generate any kind of language. No. And how that language comes? With the collection of vocabulary. We should read no collection of words that makes sentence. Sentence makes paragraphs. Paragraphs makes essays. Like that, like that, and uh, can you go to the next slide, sir? Okay, and we all uh, in the generation of blended learning, combined with the traditional and uh, online, and we coined it as a blended learning. Before the pandemic, nobody aware of using Google Meet, attending the class through Google Meet. Nobody aware of using the links. Because uh, when our teacher shares the link, uh, we able to get why and uh, no, all the links will be, you know, they all start with www dot and abcd hyphen semicolon zip. And we are confused with why this link. And we, uh, we, we have the uh, no, alienated feel towards the link. Nobody aware of the Google Classroom before the pandemic, but we started using Google Classroom. Nobody aware of the AI generated facilities, but during the lockdown and after the pandemic, we able to get what is AI and what are the sources or the materials that we'll get through AI. What is the difference between Google and AI? Google will give you the reply based on the source that it has. The information or the materials, PDFs, PPTs, what it has, it used to produce when you're asking. But AI that will cook the material for you based on your requirements. Uh, if you ask the Google, uh, I want a new letter or how to write a new letter, it will give you the PDF as a model copy of the new letter. For the, and it gives you the options that whether you want a new letter to, uh, I mean, forward to the principal or the, to the HOD, it will give you the option and you can uh, get the model report. But AI that write a letter for you. If you give your name and your uh, HMs or principal name, it gives you a complete letter. The thing is, you need to copy and take the print. So it's easy one, no? But I, I will also tell the negative side of AI later. Okay, go to the next one, sir. Okay, so these are the language tools that I have listed for the digital natives, especially for you. So we have uh, a number of uh, Android applications, Google Assistant, Chat GPT, Zeno Chat, and we're also going to look uh, the difference between uh, the Chat GPT and Zeno Chat, and uh, followed by blogs, Android games, and uh, the uh, finally artificial intelligence. 
So it's all started with the Android applications. Android applications, and you are aware of it, and you are using number of applications. For food delivery, we have a separate app. For dictionary, we have a separate app. Uh, you, if you want to order something, shopping, or uh, especially for gaming, we have a lot of applications. How many of you using application to enhance your language? Apart from the dictionary, apart from the dictionary, I'm using uh, this particular application to enhance my writing or to enhance my uh, speaking. Okay, to take it, <laughs> you're not using any of the applications. No, you're strictly prohibited all the applications. <laughs> okay, the next one, sir. Okay, impacts of AI on language and literature. And now we are getting to the topic. So how are we going to classify or how are we going to use this AI platform for both language and literature? The first starts with natural language processing technology. So whatever the uh, question that I give to uh, uh, AI, it goes with the natural language processing. How we process the human, no? I given the code, I given the secret, and that it went one by one. And like that, this code, the natural language processing, that will go with, I always, you know, focus on these cameras. <laughs> this is what, this is the problem of the digital immigrants. But you guys always have the familiar for the cameras, no? And you perform well when somebody's taking a video or the snaps. <laughs> and this is a problem of the digital uh, immigrant. Okay. And this is how that processing, the algorithm process will work. And NLP algorithms enable machines to understand and generate the human language. So whatever the human conveys, the AI will generate in their language, in their code, code language, leading to advancement. So these are the three advancements that we have. The one is uh, translation services, followed by chatbots and text generation tools. Probably you are aware of the translation uh, services. But how about chatbots? Chatbots. Uh, how many of you are using Telegram here? Telegram. Then probably you are aware of the bot channels. Yes. I think probably you are using the bot channels to download the movies. Yes. <laughs> because the bot channels are available to give us lot of options. You can download movies. If you type any of the movie name, it gives in different resolutions, different MB sizes. Yes, it gives you option whether you want this movie in 700 MB or 1 GP or 2 GP, what is the quality that you want? And we always prefer uh, free uh, bot channels. Yes, I think you, you are not paying for the bot channels, right? But it gives you the replay instantly when you go for the movie name. I hope you experience it. Like that, we have the number of channels, the Telegram channels, which gives materials instantly. If you want the complete text of Shakespeare, it gives the N number, all the Shakespeare. Or if you want any sonnets of Shakespeare, it used to give number of the 27 uh, sonnets listing out. And uh, the text generation tools. Text generation? What is text generation? the tools that we have. Because that is the basic thing that we can interact with AI. Because uh, we weren't comfortable to use uh, voice recognition to the AI. Uh, because, you know, uh, we are not comfortable with talk to our Google Assistant. But instead, we used to text to the Google. How many of you comfortable with texting and how many of you comfortable with talking to the AI? Have you have, uh, do you have any experience with talking to your uh, Google Assistant? Google Assistant is your personal assistant, right? Do you have any experience with talking to the, your uh, own Google Assistant? Because our Google Assistant is like our own uh, PA. If I take my Google Assistant, if I ask uh, what is the weather today, it will say, yes, good morning, Santosh. And today's weather is, have you experienced? Okay, if you're experienced, fine. Okay, <laughs> then the next one, sir. Okay, so AI just for the literature. AI that creates a lot of text and, uh, and we have a lot of experience because uh, whatever we want that we'll get through the generating. 
But researchers have developed algorithms that can analyze large volumes of text to identify the patterns and themes or theories or the literary devices. This is how the AI works. If you type or if you ask anything to the AI, it always works with identify patterns. And probably you have experience in that Google. If you type Shakespeare, and you, you will get the options like whether you want Shakespeare, poet, Shakespeare novels, Shakespeare dramas, you'll get a number of options before completing your typing process. And uh, the themes and uh, literary devices, theoretical base, we are aware of the place. And if you type the, the name of the author, you'll get the sources. But in AI, it will also display this particular play is a tragedy. Are you looking for a tragedy play? Are you looking, looking for a, a horror? Are you looking for a comedy? So it will classify. It will classify the literary devices and to write poems, stories, and other forms of literature. The next one. Sir. Okay, so that was that is for literature and this is for language. So role of AI in language learning. The first one is personalized learning. See, based on a student's reading habits, it always suggests. Um, yeah, when you are searching or when you keep watching the food blogs or about food or about cooking. The Google will grasp, okay, these are the areas that you are interested. And when you switch on the YouTube or Insta, it always know, uh, it will align your interests of the videos based on uh, your preference. And, uh, and though some AI works that while we are communicating, it used to grasp, okay, you are talking about shoes. And next time when you're opening Flipkart, it shows, okay, this is a new offer uh, that you can go for. And we have an offer for, uh, um, the brand uh, Adidas, and that is how the AI works. You can uh, think that I'm not. I'm, I just want oh, no. Uh, I I had an interaction with my friend on buying a smartwatch, but instantly I get the notification regarding the smartwatch. And uh, in the YouTube channel, they are reviewing the uh, smartwatches. So instantly you get sources regarding it. That is what the personalized learning. So based on the students' reading habits, preferences, and competency levels, it, the AI itself generates our mode of interest and used to give sources regarding it. Then reading comprehension. The AI will summarize and it also annotates and the interactive quizzes, followed by the language analysis, which provides a Definition for each concept, explanations, and also the translation of the difficult word and phrases. The thing is, we need to know how to access the AI. The next one. Zone. Okay, but continue with that. We have the writing assistant, and we always love this because we always love a person to specially hire for writing, like our assistant. That's why we always uh, know uh, have the Bond with uh, Google. Feedback on students' writing, assignments, and help them improve their grammar, style, and structure. Because the AI will uh, give us an error free statement. And that is the main thing that we are panic about. Because error free, uh, and why, you know, uh, we always prefer our friend who writes a letter. If our HOD or the class teacher asks us to write a letter, we always seek our friend. Uh, I'll go to Kijo. No, he'll write a, a good letter and he knows the format. No, no, we just ask uh, uh, our friend Gauri and she will write this essay because we always prefer who writes error free statements, error free sentences. Like that, AI is our writing assistant here. And literary analysis, literary text helping students gain insights into themes, characters, and symbolism. And uh, so we have the option in AI that we can uh, know, make the cricketer as a, in the literature role, we can make uh, Dhoni as a Hamlet Hugh. And we can make Suresh Raina uh, as a Othello. So like that, if you generate the image of uh, that particular character or the personality, even you can uh, make your superheroes or your favorite heroes, as your main characters of the novel. 
so how this will work uh problem if you're using instagram and uh, just few months before no uh what if more these things the ai generated audios and uh, no in the voice of modi they we used to listen our favorite songs have you heard any of the songs from modi yes ai generated and there are for uh, there are a uh, uh, lot of uh, kind of no uh, uh, people they were misusing the ai platform and you, you all know i think and i don't want to uh, coin the particular character and they use no they uh, before the ai we had the option called uh, morphing they used to morph the faces with the celebrities and they used to uh, no uh, generate in the, the social medias so we have the uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah the last one accessibility so providing text to speech audio descriptions and other assistive technologies so if you can come the ai will generate your audio and it will give you the text or if you give the text that it will transform it as a audio files so these are the uh, facilities that we have from the ai the next so okay and these are the some of the tools and uh, you are familiar with uh, the first one grammarly and uh, probably we have the free version of grammarly uh, that gives us uh, a six month pack the free trial version of grammarly is available and uh, if possible that you can uh, use it in your mobile phone and as well as it is applicable in your uh, laptop so the uh, the use of grammarly is to improve our grammar and uh, i hope that while chatting while you are chatting no it will uh, auto correct the words and we always prefer uh, no using yenga uh, irukke instead of uh, where are you yes you are always comfortable with us e n g a yenga e r u k u irukke instead of asking where are you and uh, the sapling the sapling is the academic writing that helps with citations research and as well as the structure why the citations because uh, the research writing uh, uh, people uh, they always have the con confusion whether i should follow the mla format or the apl format whether i should give uh, uh, give the references as references or the bibliography or the citations so uh, in order to clear all the doubts from the research areas the ai will give you if it is a article then go for the bibliography if it is a thesis or the project go for the reference it gives the clear clear framework for what you are writing and giving the editor is improve the readability by highlighting complex sentences as you always and uh, adverbs and usually no uh, we used to highlight the points that when we are go through or when we are reading but even ai being your assistant ai will generate the underlined word if it comes under the passive vocabulary or the odd words then cool board cool board is a paraphrasing tool and uh, rephrase sentences to enhance uh, the readability and clarity cool board is a kind of a ai session uh, probably you are aware of uh, uh, checking the plagiarism sorters you can write anything from ai but there is another ai is available to monitor whether you work with ai or it is your personal stuff okay so you cannot but that's why you know the researchers are struggling because uh, if anything and everything is possible with ai then everybody will become you no know, uh, kind of a, a graduate or everybody will become the doctorate right but there is a black point there that the dark point the ai that holds whether you worked with ai like it serves as a police in order to investigate whether you uh, had a or uh, whether you seek the help from ai or you worked in your own and the last one is a uh, lumino ai is a photo editing tool and i think probably the uh, people those who belong to uh, this conference probably are aware of it photo editing tool enhanced images for book covers or blog spots and we can convert it as a, a animated one so uh, if you give your image i think that we have a, a lot of photoshop applications where you can upload your own image you can make it as a an animated one or in a cartoon version or you can make it as a pencil sketch have you ever tried you always have the habit of making your uh, dps in uh, 
Nice manner, no? Have you ever tried? Any experience? Yes? You all have. Okay. The next one. Okay. And this is where how I should work. Okay. So we have a lot of applications and we have a lot of generating sources. But what I should do? How I should use AI for language learning? The first thing is use AI powered language learning apps for speech generation, personalized learning pathways to help you improve your language skills. So the first thing is use AI powered learning apps because we have uh, cloned applications that they can steal or they can grab your own personal things. If you go for any uh, uh, banking related queries, people use to uh, have that particular AI. So always go for the standard AI platforms in order to uh, uh, avoid these scams. Then utilize AI power language tutors to understand your strength and weakness. So uh, next, practice speaking with AI chatbots. We always used to uh, uh, go for the textual uh, feedbacks, but always go for the voice so that when you are communicating with AI, your language improves. Your interaction improves because the AI will interact with you. I that's what I asked. You know whether you had experience with uh, your own uh, Google Assistant. Have you ever asked the map for it? You always prefer map, but you never ask the direction to reach through the Google Assistant because we are not comfortable with talking in English. That way, especially with the AI, we always prefer the textual interaction. And use AI for translation and uh, vocabulary building. And this is a basic one because the AI will uh, become very popular because it gives you a free translation. And uh, we've collaborated with AI powered language study groups. It's known as uh, personalized feedback on your language skills. So it used to analyze and used to give uh, uh, instant feedback what is the level you're in. You can check your own grammar. You can check your own uh, pitch variation, tone variation, your own uh, uh, language proficiency with the AI. And we have different platforms. Whether if you want to check the quality of listening that we have, the quality of speaking you have, it will uh, evaluate your accessibility and it gives you the instant feedback on it in what are the areas that you need to develop in future. The next one, sir. Okay, so here are uh, some of the Android applications that you can access the AI from your mobile phone. The first one is uh, Duolingo. Duolingo is an application where you can download it for free in your mobile that gives you the language practice. Followed by the, we have uh, the next application, Memrise. Memrise is give you, you know, it shows you some objects and the objects will disappear and you need to memorize those objects and you need to find out the right object that you have seen. And followed by we have the double is to achieve our vocabulary and use you, raise it, learn to, hello English, learn English daily and we have some of the AI dictionary because it is combined with thesaurus and dictionary. You are always aware of the dictionary, uh, a words which is uh, uh, already exists. But Tellerus also gives the reason word because every day we are uh, coining around 400 English words. Every day we are coining. So Tellerus and the A applications that will give you the uh, updated vocabularies in your platform. Next. Okay. okay, and here is the difference between uh, the chat GPT and Zeno chat. Chat GPT, the chat uh, generating pre training transformer, the expand version of Chat GPT. The Chat GPT, that is limited knowledge up to or until 2021. If you are using the Chat GPT, because everybody, you know, they used to talk about the Chat GPTs, but GPT will give you the update till 2021. But the updated version is Zeno Chat, which gives the next minute, the updated till the next minute. So provides up to date information. And here is the example that I have mentioned. Uh, if I ask the chat GPT, uh, who won the World Cup in 2022? Because it is after 2021. 
it fails to give the proper response. And because the chat GPT, it, it's not aware of the World Cup that we had in 2022. But Xenochat, it gives you the instant results. The next one, sir. Okay. Having blocks, the AI blocks. And uh, how many of you uh, uh, have the habit of uh, keeping your status update in newsfeed or in Insta posts or WhatsApp status? Everybody know? We used to update our uh, everyday routine. Um, having a busy wind on the seashore today. So you'll be posting like this on the seashore and used to post it. That is what the initial stage of your blogs. You used to uh, post um, a picture along with your friend that uh, had a, a great time with my old friends at the tea, store, tea shop or a coffee shop. Or as you used to know, add the slogans or the quotations will become you know, like a philosopher when you're feeding things. That is the initial stages of blogs. So writing blogs is an art. You can write about anything, about today's class or about uh, positive or the negative sides or merits or demerits, anything or whatever the topic that you can take. Writing a blog is an art. How you can become a blogger? Everybody have a wish that we need to grab the attention from others. Why we are posting our status and we will be checking how many views that we got. We'll be posting some pics and we'll be curious about how many likes we got, how many hearts we earned and how many shares we have. And that's how the YouTube works, no? YouTube works based on the views, likes, even dislikes, okay, and shares. So we are curious about how many of us watching us. And blog is that kind of spot where others can read your blog, others can read your writing, how you are uh, um, uh, submitting your poems and your arts to the uh, for the publication, right? So like that, you can write, you can create your own blog and you can upload it in the blogger sites where you can get readers, you can get your followers. And uh, and here is the image that gives uh, where the conversation between the father and uh, daughter. So the father is asking, hi, sweetie, how was school today? And the uh, kid is replying that you can read all about it on my blog there. Because the child has updated everything on the blog. And uh, we used to call our friend. Um, that is what the blog because we want to get somebody's attention or we want uh, we like to have somebody's uh, view we always work on that the next slide sir. and here comes the framework of blogging so how I became a blogger so first we need to decide what I am going to write so that is what the plan what I'm going to write, what is my interested area, whether I am capable of writing a story or a poem or a novel or a short story, what is my strength so that I can plan accordingly my blog. After, after planning, I'll be go for researching, which means a background study, how many uh, reviewers or uh, how many writers have already written about this particular area. We call it as a review of literature which means in order to search the background study. Then for right. after knowing what has been done earlier, then you can uh, write innovatively because you can avoid repeating the same topic or beating the same bush. Then finally you can upload and promote it. So promote your blogs by, um, no, you can forward the link of your blogs in the status or in the social media platforms like uh, Insta or Facebook, so that you can become familiar. Then measure. So you'll get the feedbacks from your friend or from your uh, senior or from your teachers that in these areas you can work or it was a brilliant writing and you have uh, uh, managed your writing scheme in your poem. You'll get the feedbacks. So based on that, you can upgrade and you can utilize in the, you can implement in the next writing. The next one, sir. Okay, and here is uh, uh, some of the applications and softwares to practice English. So the first one is a word shake, no word, followed by four picks, one word, visual tessa, spelling bee, 
and mixed up sentences. And I th thought of trying all the softwares one by one, but uh, we'll go in a uh, lightning manner next. Next slide, sir. So here is, uh, I just explained. Actually, uh, if we have time, we can uh, practice later. And it's a word shake, but probably you, you, if you have a habit of playing the word games in uh, mobile applications, the software also works in the same order. That there it will shuffle the words, and you need to find the hidden word in it. Probably we have assumed or predicted. So what is the word is the hidden? Cashew. The hidden word is fog. Okay. So finally, <laughs> I heard some somebody I'm telling fog. Yes, it's fog. The next one, the next the next software is uh, number two. Okay, it is a no word. The no word software that gives you the clue. Based on the clue, you need to identify what the clue says. So here is the clue is an outdoor space for dining or recreation that adjoins a residence and is often kept. So what is the word? So it is something outdoor place for dining or recreation that adjoins a residence and is often kept. So this is a clue. I haven't run. So within the 85 seconds, you need to identify that particular word. And the word is the next slide. <laughs> Reveal the answer. The next. OK. OK. Which is Pasho, which is located, I mean, uh, uh, in the garden side, we'll be having the uh, kind of a uh, table set up like this. I would say this is one as a Pasho. And outer space for dining. A recreation that adjoins a residence and is often kept. And a lot of wedding uh, shoots will happen in that area. Or um, if you uh, had a visit on the coastal areas or resorts, probably you have uh, be able to admire a lot of uh, casual places. Next one. Okay, four pigs and one bird. So based on the pigs, we need to uh, find out what well, I almost uh, done the three words. So, ah, okay, wave. So the waves, the hands, waves, the frequency, the sound waves, and the actual wave. Okay, the next one. Okay, visual thesaurus spelling game. That it will, when you click it, it will play the words. And your duty is you need to find out the actual spelling of the word. So it, it is a specially made software in order to develop or enhance your spelling. And, the, and the, after completing the exercise, you will get the result instantly. The next software, the last one, the fifth one is games and learning. That it will drop one by one. But you need to grab the right one to fill in the blank. So it already throw two blanks, go, go, went. So they dash cycling last Thursday. They went for cycling, they went cycling last Thursday. Next one. Okay. I give you two minutes of time. Can you uh, complete the first three? So here are the jumbled sentences and you need to give me the right one, the right sensible sentences. Can you make? For students. <laughs> <laughs> Probably you have done the first one, yes? Now we have a confusion over whether subject, verb, complement, uh, agent, or with the indirect object or the direct object, where it goes. The first one, can I have the first sentence, first complete sentence from students? The first one. Ah, oh, yes, that is the jazz tonight. Yes, exactly. So finally, I got the one gem from the center. And uh, so, who like to become the next gem? The second one, ma'am. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> yeah, DMD is the best news channel. Right, what they photograph is uh, have a number of skills. <laughs> nice. And uh, we go to the next one. Next slide. Okay, so here are some of the applications that relate to AI, especially for education. In our field, what are the applications that AI provides? So we have applications for learning platforms, kind of tutorial systems, personalized learning, for classroom management, adaptive learning, assessment, and evaluation. And this is a, a special uh, feature for uh, AI that it gives instant feedbacks, instant evaluation, and education use cases, education applications, education trends, education research, followed by education teaching and uh, learning. The next slide. Okay, so the examples of AI in education. So we have the translation and learning, writing, early childhood education, teaching and tutoring. Why the, the younger generation, the kids always uh, have the eye on the YouTube? Have you ever seen the kids watching YouTube? Why? No? Ah, the kids used to listen to the rhymes or short stories, cartoons. I believe the no kids used to watch serials on YouTube. <laughs> Yes, why they always prefer that? Because it gives options. If they want to go for the cartoon, they can watch. If they want to watch any animation movies, they can watch. It gives an option. So parents have become both nowadays because on those days, we used to spend time with our parents. But nowadays, mom, you go anywhere, hand over your mobiles and go. And go. Because it becomes a replacing the mother. And the tutoring, tutoring, monitoring, being an advisor, the AI. The next. Okay, how this AI is changing education? So, because it is targeting the individualized learning based on your capability, based on the level of learning that you have, AI can become or it can uh, target you in, a, in for the individualized learning. C mining learning methodology. So, based on your uh, requirement, the AI will C mine the methodology because I have listed out no A1, A2, B1, B2, C1, C2. So, based on your level, AI can uh, change himself and do the access, the privacy, because uh, it's all about privacy. Because whatever we feed, that it should have the privacy concerns and automation of tasks. So, based on your level, the AI will, you know, it will adjust the speed, it will adjust the difficulty and interactive classrooms. It's a basic one where you can interact with the AI. You will give a feedback. If you're not comfortable, it gives you the another source. Then if you're not okay with that, it, gives, it goes for another one. Until you understand that particular concept, it will minimize or it will auto-correct the difficulty. The next one. Benefits of AI language learning. So, almost we have seen about the individual approach, and AI is always available for 24 bar 7 and breaking all the language barriers, unification. Because whatever we learn, if I teach you through the learn, now whatever we learn, so, okay. so whatever we learn, if I teach you through a game, through a task, you always get grasp on it. If I teach you, okay, today you are going to learn vocabulary. So vocabulary is nothing but the collection of no, you don't prefer. If I take grammar, like, okay, article, you know, we have a P, A, and B, and we have, a, we coin it as a definite article and indefinite article, no, you won't prefer to lose it. But if I give you a task, shall I give you a 60 second task now? In 60 seconds, you need to find out 10 words without using a single vowel. Can you make it in 60 seconds? Can you find any five words? Find five words without using A, E, I, O, U. 
fireworks, fan FA and A is a verbal no. camera CA, it's a verbal table PA, verbal. I like the words without A, E, I, O, U. Come on, become a human AI and work on it. Student STU is a verbal. Any five words without A, E, I, O, U? Gypsy, Jim, yes, right? <laughs> yes, any other word from friends? Ribbon, yes. Faculty, mm -hmm. you're a faculty, right? Okay. And rhythm is the longest word in English, which has only the consonants. Nice one, nice try. And by, why, cry, fry, shy, these are the words that without vowel. Nice try. So, our vocabulary bank. So, we need to work on the vocabulary bank. <laughs> and next, next slide, sir. Okay. So, as I said, I'll be showing you the negative side of this AI. Because we have been praising from the morning. Okay, we have been. Yes. We have been praising the AI from the morning, and now we are looking at its negative side. So the first one is job displacement. Sure. Okay. The first one is job displacement. Because if AI become the superior power, then one fine day, we all be sitting in our home, then we will work for us. We cannot earn money. The unemployment, it leads for unemployment. Because if AI works better than the human, and then the companies will recruit the AI, you know, instead of uh, recruiting five people uh, through the HR team, they will recruit one AI right, that will work fine. They have no, they won't demand salary. They won't specify with the timing. They are ready to work 24 by 7. And uh, so it is a bias and discrimination because uh, it leads for unfair treatment of certain groups. Because it will not be applicable for all the tools. Because if AI becomes superior, then we cannot control the terrorism. Yes, so it also has the negative shades. And security risk, we have the privacy problems and lack of transparency. Lack of transparency is the decision making process. Because if we keep depending on the AI, we cannot solve our own problems. Yeah, AI can help. Uh, when you are going for the uh, no, uh, office affairs or the academic affairs. But whether the AI will uh, tell our personal things? No. Yes, it cannot uh, no, grasp our own emotions. And dependence, so loss of critical thinking and problem solving. Only we know who we are. And we should uh, get our own solutions, our own problem solving. And environmental impact, so it gives a lot of uh, electronic waste and common emissions. Let me max. Okay, so here is another uh, uh, brilliant software we have, which is known as uh, Himata, which, which has the tagline as learn faster, work smarter, which summarize the long text. We have uh, no, around thousands, thousand number of pages. Within a short time, gives you the summary version in single page. This is what the entire text is about. Because we always prefer that one page text or one minute text. We always love to hear from, hello? Okay. We always love to uh, hear from our friend. We don't read the entire text of uh, uh, our own material, but we used to listen from your friend who is you know, ready to enter the exam hall. Yeah, the consulate run. And the last one minute plus one of the we used to manage our exams. Yes. And till that the whole year, whatever the teacher has taught, whatever you read will never work. But the last minute preparation or the last minute text or the source which was conveyed by your friend will work a lot during the exams. Kind of and uh, instant question and answer in the Himata, the previous one. And the right purpose, 10x faster. 10x, they represent the speed that it works. Now the, and you know about uh, Google Assistant, the next slide. Google Assistant, so uh, we have, I have planned for a 
uh, interaction with my Google Assistant. But we are running out of time. The next one. Okay, and this shows the reality now that the difference between the digital natives versus digital immigrants. So it's an interaction between the father and uh, son. So father asking, how do you think my first day of kindergarten went? So the kid is uh, replying, they didn't even have Wi-Fi. Because uh, wherever, if you go to a restaurant or if you go to any uh, resort, we always prefer uh, doing a Wi-Fi facility. Whether this particular campus have Wi-Fi wi facility, so we can uh, always prefer that kind of Wi-Fi zones. The next slide, sir. And meet Miss Iris, uh, uh, India's first AI teacher, uh, which was uh, created by uh, Park Labs Educate team and powered by cutting-edge robotics and generative AI technology. And uh, uh, probably have uh, listened or heard about the news. They have telecasted a few weeks before. Uh, they have introduced the AI teacher, Iris, in uh, Kerala Trivandrum, and where the kids can interact with the teacher, and they have they got the feedback that comparing to their actual teacher, they are very the students are very comfortable with the AI teacher because they can ask anything. AI will not punish them, no. <laughs> so students' uh, feedback that the team got, no, they are very comfortable with the AI teacher, uh, Miss Iris. The next one. Then. Okay, so the so to conclude, uh, I have, uh, here I have mentioned the the statement or the quotation of uh, Confucius, who is a Chinese philosopher. Where I can hear, I forget, I see, I remember, but when I do, I understand. So when you work, you can understand. You can listen to a number of lectures like this, but. You need to work with AI to understand it better. Okay, I, uh, I think you understood what is conveyed. The next one. And uh, okay, the last image that conveys. And uh, here you're able to see a man who is holding a number of books. One of the book that represents the AI tools. The second book that represents the games that we have. And we have all the sources, technical devices, Google platforms, everything. But the step students should take. The campus or the management give the sources to you. But you should take the first step. Then you take the steps one by one. Then finally, you will reach the place of success. And thank you. So, so I, I think I have finished on time. Thank you all. Thanks for pleasure listening. And uh, if you want to ask anything, you can ask. I think we had a question yesterday that, um, what was the question then? Oh, uh, <clears throat> whether AI will replace the PhD guides, or you can ask whether AI will replace the teacher like Iris, but no. Because for the Iris, a teacher should teach, no? A teacher should give the inputs. This is what the article, this is what the proposal, this is, this is how the research methodology works, and this is, this is what the Shakespeare, and this is the image of Shakespeare. Who will input the content to the AI? And though AI comes, the AI will detect the another AI's performance. So nobody can replace the supervisor, and nobody can replace the teacher. Thank you all. That's it. Any other questions? If that finds, then we can. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. From different, thank you. Different backgrounds. Yes, sir. They come and as we are a teacher, we first motivate them. We go in an order that we practice, especially I'm talking about the government school students where this facility may not be there. So they come from different localities and different surroundings, right, sir? Yes. So how I least like teacher can teach them. Fine. That's a nice question. If I belongs to Karambatur, I didn't know what about a seashore and a catamaran. So how will AI can show what is catamaran? Yeah, that's a nice one. Okay. I'll take it in this way. Whether 
um, soft skill has been evaluated through your exams or through your oral presentation whether you have soft skill written exam or soft skill oral exam okay oral and oral right and uh, so uh, what ma'am asked is how ai can differentiate between the boat and catamaran uh, am i right ma'am okay who will be the uh, i mean the content writer because ai is created by the mankind if you are taking the google the all the informations and uh, if you are taking the wikipedia all the information and contents were made by the human if whatever the human gives the uh, access or whatever the human gives the sources to the ai the ai will detect how and when you are uh, opening uh, a gmail from other accounts it will uh, know gives you a number of images in order to identify whether you are a human or a robot have you ever experienced confirm you are a human yes how that particular ai works because we'll be having a multiple account in various sources and in order to uh, confirm that i am the person who is actually logging and i'm not the ai because in order to detect that particular image if it shows a image of a coffee cup then a human can detect a coffee cup with that particular image but ai that is what the question mama okay that is what the question how this ai will grasp or able to sense that particular image because image is a image that is what the ai is generated with the codes we have code writers the actual writers will give the concept or the sources in english language but the code writers will know what is meant by a a refers to their code language that is what the image reflected so go to the first slide sir the first one after the title slide we got the algorithms where ai will take all the feedbacks or all the inputs as a code words the code languages so from code languages it will grasp the second slide sir ah that one yeah so consider this is the ai so we'll give number of subjects so based on the algorithm the ai will take as a codes so based on that the ai will uh, predict it won't predict it will judge the actual image of whether it is a boat or whether it is a catamara then then my then my conclusion gives the answer when they do they understand when you uh, yeah when they see and when you project or when you show the actual object to the students they used to because until or unless our mother or our teacher introduce a as a apple with the showing the object we are never aware of apple you would have thought about goa as apple if she failed to because that's why we have the color images comparatively when you are looking at the secondary school books and the uh, the primary school books we have lot of color images actual color images if apple is red red apple if apple is green that is green apple so in order to differentiate the color in order to make the students to understand clearly what it is that is the role of the teacher actual teacher because ai cannot be the motivator ai is assigned to teach the assignment of ai is to teach because the personal emotion of the personal connection or the bonding that actual teacher of the students is differ that is why and that is why very very of ai teacher is a teacher and ai is ai teacher Monitor teacher can give the advice. Teacher can motivate the students based on their level of based on the platform they have. AI doesn't have any personal preferences. Not a failed technology because AI has not yet stopped. Still, every day they are working on it. 
every day we have the upgrade uh, upgrade yeah so since it is a human made technology it is not a complete replacement of a human being yeah. especially teacher yes exactly. at the primary level yes so we can use a only for the tertiary students like college students or the high, high school students kind of but we, i mean the research is going uh, i have the telecast said the i mean i have showed the uh, image of the iris no ma'am yes sir this is a initial stage it is a experiment they just want to try how this ai goes among primary school students so that's why i asked the question yesterday do ai replace pst guides okay. <laughs> That is what I have answered. So it cannot replace. So I can use it for my betterment, not for my students. Because we used pen and the black and white things, black and white for teaching and learning, and now I cannot use AI in LKG to LKG classroom or in UKG classroom. Is that it, sir? टीचर <laughs> student or no the not the not the at all not the at all he is not in ai the ultimate objective of the ai is to put academic side okay. not to equip their self side i mean they thank you sir yeah yes sir thank you for the impactful speech sir now we break for tea join us back for the fifth session thank you
Welcome back everyone to the next plenary session. I'm delighted to extend a warm invitation to our eminent keynote speaker, Dr. M. Kavita, Assistant Professor of ECE, Sri Venkateshwara College of Engineering. I request Ms. Sajula, Head of the Department, to felicitate the resource person. I request Mrs. Devi Gaprema to honor the resource person with a plant. Now we have Mrs. Dhanalakshmi, Assistant Professor, Department of English, to introduce the speaker of Plenary Session 5. Good morning, everyone. With great pleasure that I introduce our esteemed guest speaker, Dr. Kavita. She holds a PhD in Electrical Engineering from Anna University, which she completed in 2023. Her academic journey began with a bachelor degree in Electronics and Communication Engineering from Vishweshwaraya Technological University, Bangalore, in 2007, followed by a master's degree in Embedded System from Manipal School of Information, Bangalore in 2009. Dr. Kavita expertise extends to various domains, including machine learning, IoT, remote sensing, image processing, and signal processing. She has made significant contribution to the field evident in her patent granted in 2023 for an IoT-based wearable medical monitoring device. Currently serving as an assistant professor in the Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering at Sri Venkateshwara College of Engineering, Sri Perambattur. Dr. Kavita's scholarly pursuits are complemented by her proficiency in developing course materials such as syllabi assignments, handouts, and lab manuals. In addition to her academic achievements, Dr. Kavita has received recognition for her research and presentations. She was awarded the best paper at a national conference on electrical system and intelligent computing. Furthermore, her seminar presentation on SVM classification for hyperspectral vegetation earned her the first prize at Sri Venkateshwara College of Engineering. Dr. Kavita's contribution to the scientific discourse are evident through her research publications, notably her work on hyperspectral image classification with a deep conventional neural network based on enhanced elephant herding optimization. Now I welcome Dr. Kavita to share her insight and expertising information with us today. Thank you. Welcome, ma'am. Good afternoon, everyone. Okay. Well, very nice to see you all here. Thank you for coming here. So let's start with the presentation. Before the presentation, we'll see. That was a good introduction about me. Just a simple one. My name is Kavita, and uh, I've done my PhD in Anna University in an electrical engineering department. So today I'm here to give an bit insights or inferences about your AI, that is your artificial intelligence. Okay. So here, then first getting into what is generative AI, how many of you are familiarized with AI, that is your artificial intelligence? So how often you use it? No, in general things, ma'am. I'm just asking general. Everyone poses a mobile phone. Early morning you get up, you do your things. You, before coming to the college, what do you do? You just see messages, then all fine. When you type your messages, what will happen? Now, the features are like that. Or if you want to send an email or something, you just write a good morning. It will state to whom you are representing it out. Yes, where is that being inference given from? There place your AI. 
then if you want to see your startup and you want to cook some good recipe for your kids or something what you will do you'll go to the google search you will just type for example paneer then it will give you a whole whole line, list of ex, uh, recipes that you can find out there there place your ai web so your artificial intelligence slowly it is inculcating in your data in the same manner of what you are as usual using your text so here as a technical person i want to give what are the basis of starting your generative ai so how it all started and how it is going and how it will lead so a statistic says that in next two years overall all your company profile or the, all the companies or industries are going to be getting felicitated with your AI commands. That is your generative AI, one or the other way, will be playing a crucial role in each and every form of the society what we are living in. Okay. Uh, I'm removed. So these are the few things what I'll be discussing. But beyond this also, we, let's, we can talk on this. So to so start with the technical terms, maybe most of you have heard about machine learning, deep learning. Yes? Yes. So the basis of generative AI has started from your, started from your uh, machine learning concepts. So when I started my uh, thesis work or my PhD research work, machine learning and deep learning were at a boon phase uh, four years back. But now, this year, that is a past year, 2023, deep learning has taken a second phase or a second avatar saying to be as a generative AI. So whenever you want your generative AI, what you're learning this, you need to know the basics, like how the generative AI has come in picture, how the generative AI has come in, the basics where it is found. So what is about machine learning? Have you learned about machine learning, heard about machine learning? What does that state in a solo machine learning? You are going to model a application, whatever is the real time application, that model modeling of an application, you build up using your statistical models. That is your arithmetics come as the basics for your developing a model. If you use AI app, use AI app the basics of start pandradana, it will start from your mathematical model. That is your statistical models come into picture and you will be learning about what are the different statistic models that you can apply to your real-time application. If you application scenario, if you have a Twitter data, you can see a vision and you tweeting it. Okay. So when the tweet has come, the tweet manager, he will say that the prediction of the text, what is going on, whether it is a positive one or a negative one, which will impact the positive state of the society or a negative state. So he will hold back there. Kudukra tweet Allah on the negative way of going. So this prediction is made using your machine learning techniques over there. So in the prediction, even if you go for stocks, I don't know how many do tradings here. Most of the college students have started with trading, I heard. The statistics says. So trading, trading or a prediction So compared to 10 years back, the trading prediction was given by the brokers, the brokers who were present over there. Now, all your machine learning algorithms have come and taken place those areas and the prediction rate is higher. So when you can, uh, with a risk free or with a low risk, you can do your predictions of your stock market. So here, what I want to intend to stay here is machine learning is the key concept or is the basics of your application of artificial intelligence, what you develop. And this machine learning will come under your whole artificial intelligence topic over there. Next, in this ML, the subset comes your deep learning. Statistical model one day, or a local limited on a data that was working fine. Because as of now, we are generating more data, right? Morning, ready, another, we take 10 selfies. Yes. With that 10 selfies, you choose one which is DP is nice, you put it on the DP status and you go off. Are the video contents you are generating or uploading? So what is happening? The data what you are giving here in the society or you are putting up, you are uploading, you are giving an anomalous data. On the data where 
process panni uh, prepare panni nee anupradhukku you need a better model or better understanding of a model so and idukaga da a subset in the machine learning was created using your deep learning networks so machine learning was the basics of your artificial intelligence with more precise or more data evaluations gaga we went into your deep learning models deep learning models are nothing but your neural network models neural network models vand enna na the neurons you heard about neurons but you know that it's in your brains so what does that do it is a stimuli cell so whenever you sense the a pain or something on your external skin that will be reflected to the brain and the brain will process and it will reflect back the same thing the same concept is applied for your deep learning the neurons are nothing but your data points there that is the data set points the large data set points are taken and activated using your different activation functions and finally produce your classified or predicted output so these were the basics of your ai how to develop your ai with these things machine learning inside deep learn deep learn now the phase is changed from the last year we can say that genai is coming to picture genai is nothing but generative ai that is nothing but now subset of your deep learning model so artificial intelligence and machine learning machine learning kulla deep learning deep learning kulla da we are standing at a gen ai that is your generative ai is playing a role over there next is so here before that what type of datas we get like how to process the datas for your ai so two types of datas we get supervised datas and unsupervised datas that is being given to your models whatever so understanding simple understanding of supervised and unsupervised na or a data irke adukku labeled data irke idu idu da idu idu da when you define it it comes under your supervised datas and the datas which are random and you don't have a name to that or a label to that that is your unsupervised datas idha model pandradhukku da we have two different models supervised we have different models supervised and unsupervised models over here supervised edukkarappo you will have different algorithms with that different algorithms you will classify or predict the data of your what is given there then so you can see that supervised learning la you have two different categories over there regression and classification two types of application can be developed using your supervised your regression and classification here regression is nothing but you will have a set of datas and the datas have a continuous dependencies on your output that is when there is a two different datas independent data and dependent data and these two dependencies will have a throughout a continuous form of interaction between them to that type of model when you want to define it's come under your regression model okay so here we have classification model also stating that you have a bowl of fruits and you want to classify them whether it is a banana apple grapes or something so that particular identification of different labels is called as your classification so supervised learning will be have two different datas both your dependent and independent datas the continuous uh, mapping or your really having a relation between your dependent and independent datas come under your supervised learning okay next unsupervised learning here you don't have any label datas here there is no classification datas are randomly huge number of datas are given and you need to process for example your remote sensing datas satellite irka satellite mail and the picture anapadu but what is happening if you want to see what are the water bodies in that only water body images are gone no there are n number of the, uh, particles or n number of images will be embedded in that particular remote sensing images so this type of data is called as your unstructured data annotated data or unsupervised data where they don't have any labels that but you need to create a hypothesis on for such a case that you can define those datas in this part the line over there that says the hypothesis for example this is your linear regression that is your linear equation here 
where it gives a hypothesis line stating the tell that these data are unlabeled. So this is for region one and this is for region two and label in that cases. So this is your difference of your supervised and unsupervised modeling. So here you can make a sense here. Supervised learning, you get the input data, choose the model, then what do you do is predict it. So but prediction in a performance andalaku irkad. So what you need to do is you need to better the performance over there. So for that, what you will do is you will update the model with different weights and biases condition. That is not the input parameters. According to the error, you choose and you develop and improvise your model over there. That is your uh, supervised model. With the errors, you will be improvising the state of your model there. Next is about your unsupervised. You can see that you directly model and you exact the the labeled data of that particular model and then you provide your classification. The error and your error uh, rating and updation is not carried out using your supervised learning. Mm -hmm. So these are different AIs. So deep learning, as I said, it's a neural network concept here because depending on your neuro, neural, uh, neural cells, the same concept will be taken in part. So different patterns or different perceptrons of the neuron generation will lead you to develop a deep learning model. From the deep learning model only, you can create your next level generation, that is a generative AI over there. So this is then uh, just a diagram for your neural network, how the neural network is there. So these are the different perceptron for the first layer. This perceptron are your input data that you need to build your deep learning model then. Next. So here, generative AI will start the concept. The generative AI is to, which has been developed for to model your large language models. So LLMs. LLMs, what I said is, every number of data on the increase on it. How we are increasing n number of data day by day. To, com to compute that and to have a good classification of prediction that we have to go for your generative AI component. Here, generative AI, what it does is, I'll come with a differentiation before that. Generative AI, what it does is, here you have already have the model, you have already done the prediction, you have got all the accuracy, your performance of the model is fine. But now what you are doing is, for example, if you are using your Google Bard, most of you have used uh, chat GPT. So what you're doing? Only one line of sentence you're providing. That is nothing but prompting the input to your machine. So you have built up the model. You have used a statistical model. All the basics parts have completed. The stage what you're standing in, that is your generative AI, where you need to prompt your inputs to the machine what you have done. So with the prompting, that is not but inputting the values or inputting the text values or image values, you are generating a new idea over there. For example, if you have with the chat GPT itself, even if you want to code, what you will do, you will just write whatever you have required, the keywords you write, you get a code. At the same time you try, you have to try to do that. Again, she will put the same code, but what will happen? She will get a code with different functions of it. So every time when you generate it, you are getting a, uh, so every time you are prompting the input, you are getting a new generated version of the inputs what you are getting. So this is your generating like the slaying of the so over there. Here, then then generated how this deep modeling was drawn towards generative AI was deep modeling. We had two types of models: the discriminant model and your generative models. This generative this generative model here has led to the idea of this generative AI. Discriminant model is what it does. The difference is. What you do is, if you have a data set of animals and it poses of cats and dogs, discriminant function of the model in the colonna, you will just say that this is a cat 
and the cat has some whiskers and it has some rub, green eyes to give the specifications to train the model. Once you build this train model, at the prediction level, it will state that, oh, this is categorized as duck or your categorized as cat. But in generative AIs, a generative method, what it does is it separately models your dog, separately models your cat, and finally the input what you are given to that specification are new dog generated images outputted. So you are only creating a new data from your existing data. That is, you are with the historical data, what you have sent to the model, you are generating a new one. So here, place your generation AI from the deep learning. Deep learning is two methods, what you have carried out, with the discriminative model and the generation. In your model, you have different models, generative models, correlation neural network model. I am talking very technical. So that will make you understand that these are different algorithms. So when you want to create or when you want to develop an app for your phone, for example, you're starting some company and you want an uh, app to be developed. So when you want to give a specification, you should know at least the background of your app, what you have to generate it, how it has to give your output of the uh, application, what you want to develop it. So this is the basis of leading to your generator AI. Yeah. So this is your AI model, how the concepts work, data labels, sunny up into the machine model for it now. But now you directly give the input, it will all do the manipulations, then it will give back to your new content. That is your new generated amount of content will be seen out there. Here, one more thing, Gen I, that is your whatever the generator AI app you're developing, that won't give you numbered values or any discrete value or any probability condition values so that model is defined by the MUDI app. You can't go or you can't uh, create this particular model over there. What are the models that you can do is, from an image, you can directly output any uh, audio or a video. From the images, you can make up a video or an audio can be generated. If you give a text, that can be converted into your audio languages. So these are your inputs that you can give to your generation AI tools. So there are no discrete probability conditions or any number of data that you can feed and get an AI app. So Gen app is that in that you have to give some text speech. That text will be converted into audio or video or any format of that. Then your image will be given and thus image can be resized, free, free, you can increase the resolution, you can decrease. The, you, know, you do right background or remove on and on. Then you will make the faces, whatever the faces, then you change the faces to have a rotation of different angle. So there place your Azure AI tool and you will be applying those to any major side. You are generating a new form of the input that you are given out of it. So this is your different models. Huh. Where Gen I, when you see that, you see a model over there. So far, what and all I spoke about your deep learning models or your machine learning models. Now, the generation has started and it is called as your transformer model. So your chat GPT, GPT is your pre-trained transformer model. With that transformer model only, you will be developing an AI tool for your applications. So what you will do, you will give all the training data, label the data, test the data, all data will be able just feed it to the transformer. This transformer is built using your deep learning concepts. From that, you will directly generate the new AI, that is your new creation of the input source. So you can see how the traditionally we started, how and how it is behaving there. Well. So traditionally, our programs are the programs output one day, or the UI are convert one day, UI and the other software are convert one day. But next, what happened? The neural network came. That is the machine learning and deep learning. So in the main, differentiate when you classify when you models apply when you statistical models, and then you predicted your output. Then what happened? 
then the era what we are living now comes under your generated models. So here you will be using different PLM that is your um, uh, programmable logical mo language models, GPTs, your pre-trained models. These models are used to learn and generate the new form of your input what is so given to us. So here, the generative models basically are of two types. So generative AI only on the, it is about language, and other one is about your image. Language is nothing but you will be prompting all your text input. The input here is text, and you will be using a language to convert that text into or text or into some other form. For example, you start typing anything for a role and you know. What happens is here in your mail ID, you can see that there is already one more letter being given. So if you want that letter, you just use a tab, tab command is to another, that letter will embed it to this uh, sentence what you're getting rid of them. So that is your generative uh, generative language models. Image models is whatever the image you give, that image either it will be used for me. Need new resolution model, a new increase or enhanced image of that image, or you can convert that image into a video also. So this part is called as your generated image models. So here are the two types. Image for the what and all we can convert it. From the image, we can capture the words or we can capture the frame of the image and we can depict and say that in the picture, no, this is all what happening on Next, you can improvise its resolution or you can improvise the enhancement of the given image. Then from the image, what you have, you can create an animated video. With that animated video, you can further give your new understanding of your concepts. So traditionally, or book or book then you understood the concepts. Now it is easy. You can see few AI's animated videos with that animated videos itself. You can have a clear idea what the application is all about. Once you read that image or once you read that video itself, that's more than enough. So what is happening here is time on the reduction level. So use of your time and the fast performance of your time of your application is being improvised more. So now when you have a text that is generated language text model, at that time, what and all we can do. When a text is given, you can translate it, summarize it, and you can answer it to your grammar direction. How many have you, how many of you have used full book? Now, students, full book is the thing. So your first year, second year students, I'll sum up. So if you want to write, yeah, where are first year, second year students are? Okay. So whenever you want to write something, or whenever you want to phrase something, the major concept here is we know the English the way we talk. But when it comes to a pen and paper, the English is different, the grammar is different. That grammar has to be known for us. So here, what you can do is, there is a good app there called a school board, where you, you can write your views in that. Whatever is the view in that, you just view in that. Then there are different, uh, uh, what do you say, different attributes to change it back into different forms. First one is, for example, when you see that, we just go and see to it. We just give something, and there is a one plus start saying rephrase. So what about it? The uh, thing what you are given, whatever the input text you are given, that will rephrase into a proper form. Then there is a grammar check in that itself. Then you can even do the grammar check for that. When you get inside that, you can do the grammar check. When you have grammar mistakes, you know, it will directly start to get it. Only for the high version, it will work on, we can go for premium. But for starting at the basics, you can learn from that billboard so much. So if you your essay writing, or your concept writing, even you know, for your projects, when you do your projects, right? What happens? You have the idea, you have cultivated the ideas, but whatever, whenever you want to put it on the paper, there's a big difficulty question. 
So what we can do is put up your idea in that, do the rephrase. That is your translation there happening. The translation missing, you are, uh, what do you say, translating not to the other language, you are rephrasing the text over it. So that will give you a proper rephrase. Once you get the rephrase, you can check for your grammar over it. So this is how you are generating AI for your text behaves. You can manipulate or you can do whatever uh, that is necessary for your text and then you can generate in a better version of your project. So in companies and industries, so they're doing this because they want to project it in a better sense, what they have. So they are using different bots like this. These bots help them to give a better version of what they have. Even your PPTs, right? PPTs there are. You just give the keywords, the PPTs are generated. So you can model or you can define the PPT of what is generated by your app there. Then with your text itself, you can get the image. You're saying that this is a coconut tree, this is a house. So this is a beautiful scenery. With that text message, you can generate a new image also. Okay, so this is what the power of Gen AI is saying as of now. And this is from the text, you can convert that into audio also. What you're reading, that can be directly converted into audio. Just only the commands you need to present it up to that particular data. Next, next you make decisions. Decision is your play games. Most of you play, right? Play a lot of your PUBG, Fire, Free Fire, whatever it is. There is always a prompt being coming up. You don't like the specification. These are the cheat codes. You read those cheat codes. What are these prompting up? This is again your AI app, which is making you to learn what are your different concepts that has to be given from the playing, the attributes what you're going around or playing around these things. So here in generative AI, lab, the basic foundation understanding is you need to understand the pattern of writing. Okay, it is very much difficult. We hear it, but we don't know how to use it. That is one big thing, what is, as of now, what you are facing. There are n number of AIs, AI apps, and there are free also. Most of them are free because they want to have the test case, they are trying it out. But the thing is, we don't know how prominently we can use that. So usage of that particular AI will help you using your patterns. Your application editing and now drop down your pattern. The pattern notations in then I you just drop down this. With the patterns, you give the prompting of your texture. Okay, once you do that, this pattern creation and prompting will help you to understand the AI apps what is coming out there. Now, in the current market, most of the high salary job is a prompt engineering job or a prompt, uh, a prompt person job. The one who knows how better the English can be given for an AI, he is getting a more salary job than the one who is developing the application. So for you guys, it is a very good chance, maybe most of it from English background, English literature background, right? So for you guys, that's much more in an advanced that when you know the pattern of any application that is given for you, and that exact pattern that can be given to your AI, that will be a prompting for that particular AI. With that proper content, you will generate the proper output for the given text. So this is how, as of now, the currently trending application or currently trending market society, what is learning about, is about your prompting of your genera. So once this prompting is being perfect or it's being clear, the next two to three years, your generative AI will speak on all different platforms of your society. So this is your Google bot. How many of you have used Google bot? In teaching, ma'am. In teaching, you are start using, started using Google bot, you know? No, not yet. So, these are your different different applications. It is a Google bar. It is some, it has a, it has your, what do you say, a smart board like your function, okay? A smart board, if you require, you will give all the colors and all, otherwise you will be a smart board. 
next is this word what it will do is you just write a sentence the half grade through the sentence it will give you already prompt you all the inputs required for you to make a better understanding of that that is we want to ellame seyano avashyam kadaya or paadi kudutale na ulukku generate panni ulukku theviyanadhu na kudutrren that is what your board is doing so now most of your uh, higher end uh, colleges or uh, uh, schools they have started with your google board technique they are implementing this with a smart board from black that is a google they are using to teach their students and make them the students learn about your new concepts than the traditionally now there are two sentences on the extent on the middle in that the knowledge about the thing what i want to say the concept what i can say can be given from your board yes So see here, it was like first one that it was all the keywords was prompted. Now we are getting a precise, a new, better version of the sentence what we have given. Making a sandwich with peanut butter and different explanation of your things. So this is the simple thing for you to understand. When you want to write or when you want to read or another other concepts. other concept editor of which is the nana 20 pages you need to summarize then you may make a summary of stating okay this is about the literature this is what the literature has happened when you give a small command on that it will summarize all the insights of that particular literature content and that will give you a better, better understanding or summarize the version of the concept that you want to okay Then how this is working with the technical again? What is happening here is here you need to do a training part. So training part now under the transformer model is the main component here. You will use the data and you will feed the data over here. So in the transformer letter, encoding and decoding letter are available. How do you mean the encoding and decoding? Encoding and I mean. Yeah, yeah. It will generate an input to that. Then, when at the output end or the user end, again when you decode with that input, you get the output over. The same thing, the same concept. The transformer will do. The input is encoded into your other models. From the other uh, models, that input is decoded when you give a test test of input of your application that you require. So here, once you do that, the from the transformer model, then you have generated pre-trained model. Here comes your GPT. That is your, for example, if you are using GPT, Chat GPT, here it comes. The model, everything is running behind the input you are giving at your GPT level. With that, from that, you are obtaining your new generated model. So this is what I was talking about. Prompting, prompting is very important. As of prompting, under that you need to analyze the patterns and what patterns you need to provide to your input, that is your model, to get your exact or accurate model that has to be generated. So this is what you will be having the database, training database. You are inputting the prompt, that is fixing the input, and finally generating the new content over. So we have different model types, text to text, which we have seen application. So here text to text and under under the most of you might be started with your research, right? So in the research work, so when I started, what I did was I downloaded some pen papers and I had to go through the whole pen papers. Then only I had to get a conclusion that this is what is being done in that paper. So when you go for research, you need to learn more and more things. You need to analyze more and more things. So what will happen is when you use a text-to-text -text AI, that will uh, that will join my app. That will help you to. And the ten uh, papers that I took most probably two days. So when you use an app, Gen app or some AI apps, it will convert your work in two hours. But on the in top the paper order, summarized values you will get it out. With that summarized part, you can learn or you can understand what is being given in that particular 
text. So we have that particular article over there. That is your text to text model. Next is your text to video model. You do it right, most of you. You create a video, you put up. Now there is all right, two videos at the reels. You can jumble them and you can create your own videos. So how is that happening over there? So this is the text to video, but the same concept here. There are two different videos, and you can, in a fraction of second, you can jumble that two videos, you create and you upload it in your reels. Now you can have your own video content also and the real video content also. That forms a new real video content. The same thing here, text to video content, any form of text, with that text you can create a video content. Next to tasks. Now, tasks is when you have a virtual assignments. So, uh, virtual assignments under a thing. That is when you want to use your GUIs. That is your, uh, what is it? you know, GPUs, graphical processing units. That is, uh, I'm talking a bit technical. So, that is not where you are gaming laptops, right? Sadhana CPU laptop in the game world, gaming world, and the GPU models, the CPU, which is over when you use GPUs, right? GPU laptops are another first year. When the processing speed there, the processing of your applications are much better there when you compare to your CPUs. So the same thing here. When you have a text pass server, then you create GUIs. These GUIs, this graphical units, these GUIs will help you to connect virtually about the that has to be completed by just fixing it. For example, most of the previously you have seen, right? If I send a voice message, I can log somewhere there. Um, there is an agriculture application where it says that from the mobile phone, if you press off the motor, it will off directly over there in the field. The same concept here, text to task server. So with the task, you can virtually manipulate the operation using your different UIs and maintain that they work. This is your foundation of your models, the how and all, the what and all the text you can do, what all the applications that you can do using your journey. Your tasks, your question answering session, sentiment and analysis, and your information extraction, image object and instruction. These are your different application what is needed now. You buy a car, what happens? You directly go buy a car? No. Previously, we used to ask some brokers, what are the good cars, and how the cars are there. These dealers will say, whatever is the best thing they want to sell, they sell it to you. But now, in your Google, when you go and say, what is this car specification, what are the reviews of this, this review is again generated by a user. This generated user bad application or this generated user review will give you your overall rating for that particular car and it will make it easy for you to whether you want this car to buy or not. So these are your specification models. How to embed these applications? That is, for example, this CA language modeling API chart along with your history. So along with your chat, there is one more embedding texture. Along with that, you will be replicating your applications. It is the technical terms. These technical terms will make you to apply for how the language model has to be learned in depth of your so these are your AI applications at different levels. For text, what and all we use, coding, the different types of codings, image, speech, videos, 3D models, 3D animated videos that you want to make it, you can do it using a Genai and others using for different streams that you have developed. In that field here, you can apply your applications. Next is your generated studio. In the studio is nothing but a gun we are chat box. With our course here, we register to drama. What will happen? When you get into the website, there is a pop-up, right? So the director or messenger will pop-up, may I help you or being solicited? That is your chat box. 
where all your application, or all your web servers are now using your chatbots. So these chatbots will help you to have a direct communication. So your course of academic education, there is no need for you to run behind some organizer. So our course not going on the You just chat with that particular bot. He will reply as many questions as you put up. He will give you the relevance of your answers. Okay. So this is your maker suit. Along with your maker suit and language models, the API has to be created. So we see some good tools, some top trending tools for 2024, and how and where these tools can be used up. So first one is what ClickUp. You just go see to that today. These are your different apps. There are three trial versions also. You can learn on this. Whenever you want to draft a mail in a good and better sense, use this particular app. That is your Twitter app. So all your modifications in your mail, you can promptly use and work to make a better version of your mail. This is what I was talking about. Here you go. This is your recent application. Full mass storage, I have it is there. So this is now it has much more further improvised. Maybe even check rather even the more features has been added over there. You can see here standard that is just refresh, standard refresh, fluency, creativity. So whatever so you want, just give it the idea of your text, you just type it. Then you rephrase it, the rephrase okay. With a better sense or a better generated new input, you will obtain on your other side. And the same thing, there are a grammar check also. So you can directly use the grammar check over. So whatever the day, now no one will be hesitating that my English is good or bad. Everyone's English is better now with using your different AI apps. Okay. Next is your grades. So now these are your apps which are coming into your studies where manner, writing, correction, everything is really laid up one by one. Yeah, everything is online. Whatever you want to give a homework, you just need to scan and approve it. And that will give you your grade system applications. So there is no manual corrections on anything. Data are your exams, your uh, homeworks, or course. These are all on a trial phase. So maximum by the mid of 2024, this will all come into picture. And uh, we might or uh, we can start using or implementing in our later working schedule models. Next is your author AI where you will be summarizing all your uh, uh, this sentence, what do you say? So social media sentences. What are social media and the board and the board of how the drastic changes has to be taken into care. Those applications or those prompting of your input next to your social medias, that will be. Next is your Noji. This is your uh, very good application for your vocabulary. Since language is a big barrier here, we speak the English the way it is we have taught it, but the actual English with the new words and the new phrases and the understanding of what is running behind and what we are talking, there fills your vocabulary. Everyone should have a good sound vocabulary. Emoji is a general new app that will help you to improvise the vocabulary. The phrase of follow, it will mend into in such a way that a better sense of your knowing your, how that particular words that is required, that will be helped in your application. Next is your open AI. Open AI is your chat GPT. Most of you have used, no? Most of you are using it, right? So this is your chat GPT. Next is your audio and AI. Here you will be converting your text into your voices. That different voice, that is audio. When you want to convert your text into audio, use this audio and AI. Trial versions are there, but paid uh, versions are also not much cost. They are around $5, $8, that's it. Okay. As an institution level, when it is considered, we can use these apps. 
Well, bravely, most of you all learn bravely. Whatever the question you get, you will give the answer. Direct answer you will get, you will be happy. No need to do rework and further. Direct answers we can open over. So this is one of your AI applications. Next is your smart arrow. So a smart arrow is nothing but your when you have a company profile, okay, when you generate a company profile, and that profile has to be upgraded. Remember, there's a better atomic unit. That is your scoring applier. Without app, app, I'm sorry, without industry application, for without industry, scoring part only, you can improvise some. And the scoring one, Google is atomic unit. That is your rating of that particular company has to be improvised and inducted. So that generation of soaring part is done by the smart side. Next is Volcoma Alpha. This is one big application where it has n number of features in it. N number and n number. For students, it is the best option to learn over. Any stream, English or physics or chemistry or biology, any form, you can do all your Questionnaire session, assignments, homeworks, LMA, you can use your Yoshama Alpha. This is an alpha version. This is the first version what has been out for this year. This will help you to understand and create all your applications that is required for you. And then the assignment could have a assignment of a better version and a curriculum. Then your projects, when you want to do your projects, and the projects will run again. So if you know whatever I thought tonight, I was about one on topic, one on was the given feature. This Volcoma will give you all the features in one app. That is one Genai app will give you all the doing of your expectations. Okay. So, so far, these are your tools. So this is leading to where? What is these tools doing to us? Are we becoming lazy or we are becoming much more brighter? Lazy. Why lazy? All is generated here. But one thing I'll say, this is, although it is in a negative sense, there is a much better version of a positive sense also here. The level of thinking has to be raised here. The unusual level of thinking is submerged to my generation, okay? The generation what you are moving in is the level. So that is why your generation is called as Gen Z, I suppose. This is where your Gen Z lies. Your generation is above us. The level of thinking should be above us. So that is what your Gen I is asking you to do. So the prompting, what I said, right, prompting is happening there. Now only you will tell us how to make a funny water masala, but you will not give that specification. You have to think in a much funny water masala, in what sense is better you need to give. That is what your level of thinking has to be done. So, okay. so this is where your time is taking up, but don't take it as in a negative sense and say that, okay, you are asking one to the and you are putting up. You should be fair enough or smart enough to see that the output generated correct by India. Okay, that is the one most thing that you need to make it keep in your mind. So, improvise in a positive sense. This is what your Google or your Sumer which I say we are giving you the this, uh, like smart conditions or smart facilities, intelligent words to that. But don't take it into your negative forms. With this, improvise the level of learning of yours. Learn in much better sense, much positive sense. Learn in such a way that it will improvise you, not rather of air, out that and low. Improvising you is what your Gen Z motto is all about. Okay. So here we have all different challenges. First is ethical and legal issue is always there. Privacy is always not maintained. That needs to be maintained. The law and education AI is certain. There are different AIs, right? The reasons what you do it. What is happening there? All your data and all your, when you take it from your home, your home, uh, the video which is giving the background of your home is being visualized by millions of people. So where is the privacy going out there? 
So whenever an app you have to develop, right, you need to keep the concept of your ethical and privacy conditions. Okay. Again, as usual, quality of security assurance, you have a better quality of using your AI apps. Hey, in this, the social culture acceptance. For me, for you guys, you are accepting the views. But for me, I don't accept views. I feel that that is, what is that's boring. It's killing my time. I don't want to go to the reels. But what your your generation is doing, almost all everyone is seeing under your views. Yes or no? A lot of minimum for one hour solid a period. You will learn a reels, your reels. So here comes your social and cultural acceptance. You accept in a good sense your generation tools, that is the AI tools. That is what is required for this particular generation society. What is building on now? Okay. So these are your different applications. All applications for so AI are there. We can any profession. Um, be your labor what you say. The teaching profession, your industry profession, your coding profession. So there's a recession happening this year. Why there's a recession happening? Not because that they are not all capable and all developers or coders. They are all being laid down because they are part of work is carried out by your new AI applications. So now what the thing is that you need to upgrade to AI application. Then developing your code, so then the chat GPT in the code and the code way now. In the code way now, the direct code way now. In the language way now, C programming way now, Python way now, Java way now. What is the next step? You need to make and analyze of the further step. That is what your next level of thinking should be. Adapt to AI in a good sense. So one more example that I wanted to say, tell you about. This is your DLM. This is your application. For example, if you want to do some web scrappers or web applications, when you want to develop this, this is one application that I wanted to introduce, show you that. You just need to give the text. With that text, so it will clear you all your captions. That is, images on a direct cover, you will get a generated image of that. So there are two versions, one and two, the LA one two. This is used for your teaching applications. Otherwise, I got it here. But the law not done that way, whatever is the text today, so no on the lecture put the everyone in gold up. So what is happening is your teaching skills or teaching management is changing to image and videos, that animated videos as well. So this DAL is being used currently uh, from in your Delhi University, they are majorly using it for your uh, creation of your content for the lecturing part. So deliver a lecture, we are using DLE concepts there. The text is directly converted to an image. From that image, you will draw your lecturing part again. That is the teacher give the lecture by seeing that, right? It's showing those images rather than from your textbooks or from YouTube, so everything is done. So this is technical part, we'll just move on this. And so this is what I wanted to say. If you want to learn a transformer model, you are just giving the same that the Corby play your plane showing your strong pattern. Your transformer model learns, that is your chat GPT comments of signature, then it goes your encoding and decoding method. Finally, you will get an image stating your what is your application. So this is how your uh, teaching is being converted into image and animations and part in the new generation language of the new generation colleges I to see. So, these are different advantages, no need of technical parts. Next huh. Here, the image is text in the text on the image are convert on now, but images are images are not a media. That is, when you have a human text images, the realistic images can't be converted. This is the advantage of this advantage of the 
but whatever i am just specification is i was student as a teacher we start learning about the ai tools and we start progressing ourselves in a better sense and in better generation to understand the new language of the society here so these are different references from where i've gotten the pictures and all so so far any doubts Anything you want to ask? Okay. Ah. I just summarize. What you do is you don't give a content as in such full. Paragraph on the one twenty words limitation of the layer. I don't know which in your Kurita. What you do is take maximum of two sentences from that you generate when you go for premium, no premium, when you pay and go for premium, that time you can give a whole paragraph that is summarized in a better sense. But here, when we are using our limited trial versions, what you need to do is, I have used, give two sentences or maximum three sentences, so that summarization is better. PDF, they think, then, uh, if we upload the PDF, it will summarize and give you. Yes. That's what I think that one. Mm -hmm. They don't PDF up to the quality. That is why. That is the trial yeah. versions what is happening. It gives me, it gives you. Well, one thing I will just specify is this take up an article publication. Okay. There's an abstract, introduction, proposed methodology, results, then your conclusion. What you do is you select the phrases abstract or summarization. Methodology or just summarization. You go with as of now, this is the problem. The something is the problem. Where we can't get an extract. So, under two years, right, you will have that. So, we will summarize only to one minute. So, we are in that stage of generating that. The PM is very difficult to understand. So, I want the simple version, simple version. Yeah. So, I tried that uh, yeah. summarize for that purpose. We didn't serve my minimize this, uh, minimize the info content. The part of the content, what I said to give the content, that is what I'm saying. Minimize it. As long as you minimize it, you will get a good sense or a better version of your answers. Any other doubts? We are very glad, Mom. We are happy to see you here. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Mom, it's, it's very lovely. for the research funding. We are supposed to use our own day. I mean, for it's our own interpretation, it's our own idea that we are going to the synopsis, right? Mm -hmm. But using all those things like for the tools of the AI. Being a version and a being transform and it's new to our language, but does it come from the plagiarism? Yeah, but there's a two different methods to understand here. Your peers, your work, you will give your input in your language. Understood? Copying from a text, then giving as an input will lead you to plagiarism. There's a difference always. Okay, so you write a synopsis, you write your ideas, the whole ideas in any form. You just put up that idea, you do your full work, you do that, do a rephrase for that. That will give you the version of yours only. It will just correct the version or rephrase it, grammar correction, everything will do for your work. Yeah, 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 your interpretation or your words, what you are translating here. But when you go, similar work is carried out in somewhere or other. With that data, you take and give it as an input. Although it rephrases, maybe the percentage of it will be less. 80% and then 60% of it is from the plagiarism farm. So, what I am telling is, Alba you think in a better sense, you give your inputs from the level of thinking what you're doing. Then the A apps are really worth to use. Okay. So, this is the difference. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other doubts? Any other Mm -hmm. 
Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So you have uh, spoken about the prompt, right? So prompt is something very much uh, needed and necessary to create the correct ideas and to get the content. So, right? so is there any technique for uh, to learn something about how to give the right prompt? Right? So technique in the sense, as of now, what we are doing is to take an application. For example, you have to write an essay on uh, pollution load itself. You want to write an analysis on pollution. You will say that give me a paragraph on pollution, Anna. It will give you all types of pollutions and it will give you a whole lot of data and it will give But in particular, when you go for air pollution, you give an input in such a way that air pollution, along with the quality index, along with the purification techniques, and along with the measures to purify this, these keywords when you use, right, that will give you a better output than this to be generated. Yeah. Yeah. So this is what uh, the uh, society, the market is looking for. This prompting, uh, proper prompting of an application to the high demand entry so Prompting has to be clear enough for a given application. Or in the end user, in the way of other the input only get three people on the prompting and the correct period. So, thank you, thank you so much. As of now, most of them are using it or this technical English words that are using them learning it. They train you, but they train only for the specification of it. On the industry can navigate more, other people are not trained for it, they are asking to give the inputs. But as in general, as a good communication language and good technical content, they are hiring. So through experience, we learn how to do the from right from that is from Asian book. Any other doubts? <laughs> so thank you all. I hope there is no more doubts. Um, thank you once again. Thanks for the, giving an opportunity to see you all and have a good interaction with you all once. Okay, thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for imparting knowledge on generative AI tools, trends, and innovation. We really had an eye opening session. Here we end the plenary session five of day two. Thank you, everyone. We wait for lunch and we will resume back for session five. Sorry, six. At 1 30. Sharp. <laughs>